Hello, this morning in our daily walk through the Psalms, we are in Psalms chapter five. You know, just so we understand the Psalms are songs, of course, and poetry, different than the poetry maybe we're used to where there's everything rhymes, this shows um, contrast this in one in particular today kind of shows a contrast between the righteous and the unrighteous, the good and the evil. Evil, and, and so there's a verse or two that will talk about, you know, David and the righteousness, and then there'll be a verse or two that'll talk about what it is to be ungodly and, and the dangers and destruction and all that. God, God in his word is very clear on his blessings for those that would simply trust him and follow him and and the fear of the Lord is 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 a fountain of life to turn away one away from the snares of death and so the encouragement for this morning is is just in that of seeking the Lord we'll see that even in the in the get-go in verse 2 there about seeking him early um, another scripture talks about I, where the Lord says, I love those that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. And that's, that's a huge key we'll see in, in chapter five today. It's a huge key of starting your day. Uh, I love getting up. In fact, even before I get out of bed, I love to just simply, you know, bring every thought captive to, to, to Jesus right then. And and start with just Lord fill me with your spirit. I don't even want to I don't even want to start thinking this day without you leading my thoughts. And what a great thing it is to to experience that and to enjoy that every morning, you know, starting our day with the Lord. But we'll read uh, chapter 5 of Psalms. It says give ear to my word. Notice David is continuing those those thoughts of of bringing his, his um, self to the Lord, to the word of God. And he says, oh Lord, consider my meditations. I, I love that. I mean, the fact is God knows our every thought. So David's just simply saying, hey, consider those meditations. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my king. And notice how he dresses, my king and my God, for unto you will I pray. He, he dresses you know, the Lord Yahweh, you know, and it's capital in, in our in our Bibles, in our New King, or in our King James. But he says, my King and my God, my Elohim, my Yahweh, my Elohim, my King. Uh, it's always important to know <laughs> the God that we are addressing. I mean, there's all kinds of little G-O-Ds running around in this world, but there's only one capital G, capital O capital D or capital L capital O capital R capital D Yahweh God there's only one creator one God of heaven and earth he's the king of all things and so we address him in that way and he says in verse 3 my voice shall you hear in the morning oh, oh Lord in the morning will I direct my prayer unto you and look up second thing first thing is who we're addressing the second thing is of course seeking him first thing in the morning making him the beginning of your day and and, and worshiping in him and and walking with him and talking with him and meditating upon him throughout the day you know continue to bring your mind uh, captive to the obedience of christ throughout the day uh, so important but starting that day uh, with the Lord and then then their contrast verse 4 for you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness neither shall evil dwell with you the foolish shall not stand in the sight in your sight nor because you hate the work workers of iniquity you shall destroy those who speak false the Lord abhors the bloody and deceitful man uh, or bloodthirsty men men that that take pleasure in hurting others uh, it's just amazing, you know, when people turn their ears or turn their way away from the Lord, how uh, they, they are turned unto the power of Satan, which is destroy life, destroy others. Uh, 
bloody, bloodthirsty, speaking falsehood. You know, we see that in our media today. We see that in, in, in our world around us. We, we know we're coming into the end of the age where it just seems to be amping up. Uh, Satan knows his time is short, so things are amping up on the, on the evil side. However, we also know that um, God is, is keeping his hand on his people, on his church. The gates of hell will not prevail against his church. So we have that hope of heaven in us by his spirit and by his presence. Yet the world is indeed uh, falling apart, or, or I should say f falling into place because God had foretold her what's going to happen in the end of the age. But God hates the workers of iniquity. Um, we, and by the way, if you know the Lord, you hate your own falling into works of iniquity when you stumble or when you find yourself doing things selfish with selfish ambition or doing things um, self-centeredly, you know. We don't like that. It seems to cause, and it does cause division, cause consternation and grief. It's so much better to have a loving attitude and, and, and putting people first as Jesus has, has taught us. But, but the Lord will judge the deceitful man, the bloody and deceitful man. Then verse 7 through 8, again, the contrast of, of the righteous. But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. And in fear, I will worship towards your holy temple. And there's a third thing, a third important factor in our worship of the Lord is, is having the fear of the Lord. It's something that he does in his spirit in us. I don't think that the, the natural man really understands how big and awesome God is. But once we experience the, the work of the Spirit in our lives, we realize, oh my goodness, uh, he's so much greater and, and, and huge and powerful than I ever imagined. And there's a, a fear about that. There's a, certainly a respect and an awe, but also a fear. I mean, he has the ability to wipe us out, to send us to hell, and yet he sent his son Jesus Christ to take hell for us so that we can enjoy him and eternity with him. And so it, it, it's an amazing thing, having the fear of the Lord. And, and again, uh, you know, I will come into the house in the multitude of your mercies. I, I think of Psalm 23, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's the hope of heaven that we have as a Christian with, with Jesus in our hearts. Having been forgiven of our sins, we know that our destiny, our hope is in heaven, not on this earth. It's amazing. And then contrast again, verse 9 and 10. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth, speaking of the evil or the unrighteous. Their inward part is very wicked, is wickedness. Their throat is an opal and sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Notice that. The th their, their mouth, their throat is like an open grave, you know. Um, just death and, and stench. Um, and they flatter. And, and you got to be careful of that flattery, you know. It's like I, I've heard it said that uh, flattery is like a perfume. Smells sweet, but... But don't drink it. <laughs> It'll kill you, you know. Uh, you got to be careful of that. And why Why would somebody try to flatter you, you know? And I don't mean, I mean, there are those times when people just give you a compliment. And and, and you can always sense, there's always a, I think there's a baloney meter in all of us where we can sense if something is valid or there, maybe there's somebody's trying to fish for something or give you a sales uh, pitch or whatever. Um, and, and really, the, the way that we, we discern all that is simply, you know, running it by the Lord. Lord, what is this person saying? Um, it's this Holy Spirit that gives us that discernment and that understanding. Um, just, they flatter with their tongue, destroy you them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. And that's the problem. When a person rebels, they're turned over to, to wickedness. When a person rebels, uh, there's deceit. Um, you know, if they haven't submitted to the truth, then they're going to be open for every lie. 
And then verse 11 and 12, a contrast back. But let those who put their trust in you rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because you have defended them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For the Lord will bless the righteous with favor and will compass him with a shield. What a wonderful thing it is to start the day with the Lord and to, to be reminded of his goodness and his protection. He, the fact that he is our defense. We don't have to look anywhere else. We have a fear of one thing, and that's the Lord. And if you fear the Lord, there's nothing else to fear. Amen? I mean, he's with us, and he'll never leave us or forsake us. He'll guide us. He guides the steps of a righteous man. And so we have that hope of heaven, uh, his throne in heaven. Long for that, living with him. And, and of course, he's with us now, and we're with him now. But one day when we pass from this life, we'll be with him in eternity. And that's our hope. I hope you have Christ in your heart today. If not, just ask him in. Ask him to forgive you of your sins, to be your Lord and Savior. And he will do that. And then take time to go through and read his words. Study those Psalms. Listen to the hearts of, of men that, that have fallen in love with the Lord and have found him to be their counsel and their strength and their defense. God bless you this morning, and may he ever be with you in, in power and in might. May you experience his love in a, in a better way today. In Jesus' name.